was, who is the Lord? And she was singing, it's good to know. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you'll be kind enough to turn with me to Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. It's a very old, familiar passage in the Pentateuch of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, with Leviticus being the centrality of the Pentateuch in the middle of that as you begin to study that and know, but even even Joshua had some, it was a continuation of the Pentateuch, but that's not important right now, but uh, you, we haven't even gotten to uh, where we're headed. Uh, notice that I did not rush to start preaching out of Exodus. I'm um, I'm spotting it here and spotting it there, and there's a reason behind it. Uh, if you have your Bibles and you are with Exodus chapter 3, of course, I'm reading from the NIV. I would just ask you to silently read along with me as I read, no matter what version of the Bible that you may have, and I hope that you would have the NIV. If you don't have one, I would hope that you get one, uh, but... Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horab, Orab, the mountain of God. That's Mount Sinai. And uh, there the angel of the Lord, that's God himself, Jesus, uh, appeared to him in flames of fire within a bush. I want you to keep in mind the rest of the time that you're reading Exodus that God was always dealing with fire. He was dealing with clouds. He was dealing. Pay attention to that. Uh, flames of fire within a bush. Moses saw that, though, the bush was on fire. He saw that the bush was on fire. It did not burn up. He saw that, though, the bush was on fire, it did not. Oh, y'all missing it. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. Uh, and Moses said, here I am. Uh, Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father. That's an interesting statement there. Uh, the, uh, the God of Abraham. Notice how he did that. I won't go into a whole lot of right now, but you've got to remember Moses' father's name. This tell you that when Moses was going back and when his mother was raising it up, his father was teaching him who God was. But no, Moses had never met God. Y'all see the text now there? He said, I, I, I am uh, uh, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. My, my, my. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now the cry of Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh bring, to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I, I, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You will worship God on this mountain. Uh, that's enough of that for today. We, we pick up the rest of it next time I get a chance to preach. Father, in the name of thy son Jesus, uh, uh, I want to talk to him for a while when, when being nosy is good. 
And I pray that you shall use me to teach them to understand this text a little bit better, a little bit deeper, and that they can apply it to their lives because every now and then all of us get a little nosy. But sometimes, God, we get inquisitive, we get curious, we start praying, we get meddlesome, we go to snooping all in the wrong places. But I heard Sister, Sister Kimbrough singing, it's good to know, yeah, and, and Jesus, and it's good to know the Lord. So we thank you, God, that we do know you. And if there's someone here who don't know you, by the time I finish this text, I pray that they may come to know you in the pardon of their sins and build a relationship with you. Now, bless now. From the top of my head down to the sole of my feet, anoint me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The question is, who is the Lord? Exodus is, uh, uh, is uh, a lesson uh, 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 full of, uh, of questions like that about knowing God uh, through personal experience. In other words, developing a relationship. Help me here is the is the center of the plot in this text. It's the center of Exodus. It's, it's, it's God trying to say, I want to have a relationship with my people. I, I, I can't redeem you if I don't have a relationship with you. I can't change you if you don't allow me to have a relationship with you. I can't turn you around if you don't have a relationship with me. I can't bless you if you don't have a rela everybody, anybody here don't have a relationship with the Lord. You're, you know, so, so he's saying, I want to have a relationship because this is the center of the plot that develops between the Lord, uh huh, yeah, God in Israel, in the Israelites from a dramatic meeting with Moses at the burning bush. This was a dramatic encounter. This was, I got your undivided attention encounter. Anybody in here ever had an undivided attention getter from God? Well, I don't know about you, but I have. I, I promise you, I, God has, has a, a very unique way of getting our attention. Somebody ought to say amen. But you can't say amen if you can't relate to what I just said. Uh, have, help me here, Holy Ghost. It says here, when you look at this text, you understand this. Uh, you, you, you know, if you're going down the highway and there's an accident and you see the lights flashing from the police department or from the state trooper, <coughs> excuse me, you tend to slow down. And when you slow down, the first thing you do, you start saying, uh, you want to look and yeah, look and see. See, there she said, I know that's what she do. Because she already said, you want to look and see what's happening. You, you, you go through the neighborhood and you see police tape wrapped around stuff. You want to look and see what happened. You know, so, so when you see incidents and accidents, you tend to want to figure out what's going on. And, and so then when you do that, uh, that's not unusual. If, if, if when you were in high school and when you were growing up and things were happening, you, 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 a, a fight take place instead of you running from the fight. Yeah, you, you get nosy. You want to run. You ought to talk to me only if you can now. You know, and some of y'all were fighters. You, you, you started the fight. And, and, and here, tell me, you, you know I'm telling the truth here. But, 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 and we tell our children, you see a fight, run the other way. I, I don't even know why you told them that because just as sure as they see the fight, they run in two. Talk to me only if you can now. They run into the fight. That's because they know it. That's because they're inquisitive. That's because they're curious. That's because they want to pry. That's because they're meddlesome. You know our ancestors said, stop being so meddlesome. Yeah, y'all heard them tell it. Y'all heard them tell us, you, you're going to get yourself in trouble snooping around stuff. Help, help me only if you can now. And, and, and so then, and, and, and Moses' life and, and, and the Egyptians' Uh, life in the Egyptian prince. Note here now, Moses was the Egyptian prince. And, 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 and he has lost that, that, that mantle he had. And now he's a lowly shepherd working for Jethro in the wilderness. So, 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 so no, nothing, uh, uh, think about that. Nothing man, uh, 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 nothing Moses uh, 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 could do but 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 be humble himself because of the situation that he was in. Have I got a witness here? Moses had 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 found 
uh, an unexpected thing to happen to him. Uh, uh, he, he did not expect when he was in Egypt that somebody had saw him kill that man. And then he turned around and he was, y'all learned that in your lessons, I hope. And he turned around and he was getting at the Hebrew children, people for fighting against one another. And the man said, well, who made you? Did, 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 didn't you just kill that Egyptian? And Moses said, well, if they know it, that means Pharaoh know it. I better get to stepping. Help me somebody here. But, but they, see, that was a nose moment. Uh, Moses, when he saw them fighting, he was being nosy at that moment. He was prying. He was being curious. He was being inquisitive. And he thought he could do something to change it. But it was part of the plan for God to exit him up out of Egypt so God could use him in the future. So sometimes you, you get into stuff uh, and God have you to get into stuff and see stuff and it causes you some problems because God trying to protect you because he got something better for you. Have I got a witness up in here? So, so then, so, so, so the result of being a, 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 a nosy, things, unexpected experiences happen. As a, a result of being nosy, an unexpected call uh, from an unexpected source will happen. For being nosy, an unexpected holiness will happen to you. For being nosy, an unexpected uh, uh, assurance uh, 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 will take place. And, and for being nosy, an unexpected uh, commission will take place. First, I want to look at an unexpected experience that took place. Have I got a witness here? Let's go to the text. Being nosy is not always bad is what I'm trying to tell you. Being nosy will, will, will keep you out of trouble sometime. But, 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 but people, when you start to dip into people's business, they have a te tendency of telling you, you need to mind your own. Yeah, 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 I, I, I got it. I got it. You, 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 know, you don't want everybody to know your stuff. It don't matter about whether they know it, God know it anyway. Help me, somebody, only if you can. Here, here, here in this text we have here, you, know, you see this scripture, God, God takes the, the, the initiative and reveals himself through words, signs, and wonders. Now, I want to remind you of this. God takes the initiative. I want to remind you of something. You didn't save you. Uh, God took the initiative to save you. You, you didn't save you. God, God, you. You didn't go looking for God. God came looking for you. Because God saw something in you you did not see in yourself. So anytime you think that you 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 yielded to God, no, you 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 God came looking for you, and since He looked for you, He had something to happen to you in your life to turn you around so He could use you in His business. Same thing here with Moses. He had an unexpected experience. Anybody here ever had an unexpected experience with God? Yeah, that's one, that's two, that's three. Uh, anybody, that's four over here. Five back there, you had, you, some, 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 something happened in your life, and it was totally unexpected experience, and it scared the H-E double hockey sticks out of you. Help me only if you can here. But he got your undivided attention because he wanted to bless you. He wanted to save you. He wanted to help you. So here Moses, Moses has, has gone out into the wilderness and here he is. And, and, and you need to make sure you understand uh, Moses was probably missing his family. You know, 40, 40 years, he, he, he missing his family. He probably worrying about what's going on back there in Israel. And, 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 and so you, you, you got a note here that, that since God has initiated this, he, he probably was reflecting on his past. You know, sometimes we reflect on our past. But when we have an unexpected experience, our past has a tendency to we, we go right across our face and we remember everything we ever did. Anybody in here? Ever, yeah, I know you have. Uh, yeah, I, I know you have. Get, get sick and see what happens. Help get some bad news from the doctor and see what happened to you. Uh, uh, have a close friend such as Linda who, who just passed for some of y'all. You know, you reflect back on when you met her. You know, she was a member of this church for 72 years. Help me somebody. 
So, 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 so you, so when you, so, so that reminds all of us that time is winding up. That, that's all. Yeah, that, that, that's all. We, 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 we all going to get there one day. But here, 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 here. And I ain't in no hurry. But th- th- this burning bush experience reveals an object of for testing. First of all, here's what it says. Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he held the f- held, led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Orab, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames, fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. That's an unexpected experience. Have I got a witness here? He, 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 he just tended to the flock. He, he minding his own business. He's trying to do what he know he need to do. He didn't realize that God was using the, the shepherding process to time for him to be in that land so he would be familiar with the land but when this burning bush showed up that was an unexpected experience in his life so not only did he, you know you got to pay attention to small things like but not only did he have an unexpected experience <clears throat> he had an unexpected call from an unexpected source you better hear what i said now he had an unexpected call from an unexpected source That's point number two I want to share with you. First of all, he had an unexpected experience. But now that he saw the bush, and the bush is on fire, and it's not burning up, he got nosy. He got curious. He, 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 he got, he got, he started to prying. He started, he got meddlesome. He got inquisitive as to why the bush is burning, but it is not burning up. And so then, all of a sudden from the bush, he had an unexpected uh, call from an unexpected source. The bush on fire, and from the bush it speaks and says, Moses, Moses, that is an unexpected call from an unexpected source. Curious, investigating this, 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 this being nosy. So Moses thought, I will go over <coughs> and see why this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Look here, it, 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 you, you would do the same thing, maybe. I don't know, some of y'all probably run. But I, I, I don't know what I'd do. I, I might run if I saw a bush. If I saw these, f- these, these flowers on fire and they not burn, I don't know whether I would be able to stay here I, I don't know whether I would stay or whether I would run. I, I just don't know. But, but nine times out of ten, I said, well, I don't think so. I, I got to get to stepping. But, but, but Moses, he, he, he got noses. And, and he went to see why, uh, you know, why this bush is burning, but it is not burned up. That's a good thing. See, that's when being nosy is good for you. Because... When he got, when he saw that unexpected, when he got that unexpected call from an unexpected source, that got his undivided attention. First of all, how did the bush know who I am? Yeah, 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 that, 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 that's a good, that's a good question. How, how can a bush talk to me and call my name, you know? And, and, and it's, and, and so the bush, he said, Moses, Moses. So, so, so God meets Moses by name it wasn't just Moses he met Abraham by name he met Noah by name God 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 will call you by name in your spirit he he got but in the Bible it's very clear that God will call people by name so 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 you got this unexpected call from an unexpected source this burning bush he called on Moses God called to him within the bush. Moses, Moses. So if, 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 if you understand that he had an unexpected experience, <coughs> he now had an unexpected call from an unexpected source. But number three, he had an unexpected holiness. First of all, he got the call from an unexpected source. He got the call from an, had an unexpected experience. 
Now he's getting ready to have an unexpected holiness. Because after he realized that, that, he, that the bush had called him, uh, he, gets some, he gets a directive. Because Moses, when he called him, Moses said, well, here am I. Here I am. And, and then God said, well, do not come any closer. He said, uh, God said, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Can I put a pen there a moment? People tend to forget about this is God's house. People tend to get dressed up in street clothes and this is God's house. And if they're going to wear the clothes that they wear, they should wear them out there in the street, not in God's house. Don't get quiet on me now. People tend to say things in God's house because they forget that this is God's house. People tend to come to God's house and be eating and drinking stuff in the pews and leaving the stuff in the pews. And this is God's. <coughs> Y'all ought to talk to me if you can. You can't treat God's house any kind of way. Because I told you, where one or two gather in, in my name, what? He, he, what? he gonna be there. And, and, and so you can't come up in God's house and disrespect him by the way you dress, by the way you talk, and eating anything in God's house. I, I, I don't have any problem with people who have children and, and children get hungry, but take them outside the church and feed them outside there in the lobby. Uh, 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 and, and Lord knows, please don't change them inside the sanctuary. Uh, if you don't want to handle the smell, what make you think somebody else want to have? I'm just talking about God's holy place. For God says, take off your shoes. For the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. Can I go a little bit further? Uh, some people, I, people don't smoke like they used to. But, 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 but I used to see people that would come to a funeral. And one thing I did admire about them, they would take out a cigarette to smoke, but at least they would walk across the street. Help me here. So, so, so they're trying to show some respect for the Lord's house. I, I remember back in the days when I was coming up, there was no way that, that certain people would come dressed certain ways and some of them elderly sisters would not say something to them. You know what they used to do? They used to keep them scarves. Help me here. She got one on her right now. I can't grab that. But, but, but they, they used to, and, and if things wasn't right, they go throw us, baby, you need to put that scarf across your legs. Help me. I know y'all don't want me to talk about that. I'm just talking about this holy place. I'm just talking about what, what, what we can't disrespect God. But Moses, here he is. He before God. He said, uh, God said, Mo, take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. Because the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. So he had, number one, an unexpected experience. Uh, and, 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 and he saw a burning bush. And then number two, he had an unexpected call from that burning bush from an unexpected source. The unexpected source, the call came from the bush, but the unexpected source in the call was God himself. That's God talking to him. And, and y'all know when God trying to tell you something in your spirit, uh, what, what's that song used to, they used to sing? Purple, purple, I start to say purple rain because I do like, I do like him. And I do like the song, but that, that ain't the one I'm talking about. Uh, 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 the, the song with Whoopi Goldberg had the movie. Color. Yeah, thank you, y'all. Thank you. I knew y'all watched it, too. Especially y'all watched it when she got ready to shave him. Yeah, I know y'all. Yeah, anyway, so, so. <laughs> help. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> help me, somebody. But here we are. So, so, so. And, and in the song, it say, God, trying to tell me. You, 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 you had that experience when, when you were doing something. You know you shouldn't have been doing it. God was trying to tell you something. If you haven't, he showed did, he showed did it for me. And, and I'm glad he did it. Because I'm alive because I listened to him. But I ain't listened to him all the time. And neither did you. Or neither did us. But, 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 but I, I tried to listen to him. And that, that's what kept me and got me to be where I'm at today. So you had an unexpected experience. You had an unexpected call from an unexpected source, which was God himself. And then you had an unexpected holiness. But number four, you had an unexpected assurance. <clears throat> it's, one, it's one thing to have an experience with God. And we've all had that. 
an unexpected spirit. It's, it's, it's another thing to have an unexpected call from God and, and, and an unexpected source from God talk to you. And then it's another thing to realize that your ground that you're standing on, that you're dealing with God, you're dealing with some holiness, and you got to do things differently. But, 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 but God, I hear you talking to me. God, I, I know it's you, and, 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 and I've been struggling, and I've been trying to figure this thing out. So, God, I need you to assure me somehow. So what Moses get, he get an unexpected assurance from God. Pay attention to the text. He said, here, I'm all the way. He done told him to take off his shoes. I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now he comes and he tells him in verse 7, uh, he gives him an unexpected assurance. And that's what I'm talking about. We sang that song. You, you, you figured it out. See, she owned it today. She, she back here singing what I'm getting ready to say. Blessed assurance. Jesus is what? Oh, what a of glory. Heir of self. Oh, y'all got it. See, so he got an unexpected assurance here. Seven verse. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. <coughs> I have heard them crying out. Because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians. And to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey. I, I, I want to read a little bit further here. Uh, for it says here. And I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring people, my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. I, I, I want to make some points here right quick about this uh, unexpected assurance. First of all, I want you to see Egypt representing the world and sin. I want you to see Pharaoh in this context of representing uh, the world and sin. Okay, uh, Egypt representing the world, Pharaoh representing sin. I, I, but I particularly want you to, to see Pharaoh as representing Satan right here. And Egypt representing the world, okay, as I explain this out. So some assurance in here. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt, uh, in the world. I, God, God sees our misery in this world. God sees your misery. He sees and understands what you're going through in this world. He, 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 he knows everything. He sees everything. He has all power and he's everywhere at the same time. Now, now you may not feel that sometime when you're going through what you're going through. But Brother Robinson back there, let me tell you something, young man. God, un, he's there for you. He sees you. He knows what you are going through. And you can be assured of that because he said it in his word. God's word does not come back void. And since it does not come back, boy, when you see this, you got to see that God sees what's going on in the world. But I, as I tell you before, God uses us to speak truth to power. God uses us to speak to our children. God uses us to speak to our friends and our neighbors to help them get on track with the Lord. Help me some, he said. But he said, I see <coughs> the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out. God hear your prayers when you're crying out. But before you cry and ask him for the help, be like David. Say, say to him, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. He, but, but, but before David got to that part, he confessed that he had sinned. We just have to confess to the Lord that we are sinners. And once we get that confession out of the way and we do it earnestly from our heart, then God is ready to step in, Sister Joan, and hear your cry and come see about you. Let me put something on you men here. I want to let you know something. You cannot get a blessing from God if you mistreat your wife. 
he, 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 the Bible clearly says, I do not hear your prayers when you don't take care of your wife. Now, that, 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 that's why some of the things that happened in your life, you couldn't move like you wanted to. Things wouldn't fall in place for you because you wasn't doing right by the lady that God gave you. Help me, somebody here. I ain't got time to go to the scripture, but it's there. And let me tell you something else about this thing here. He said, I heard your cry. Uh, uh, and, 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 and so I'm glad that God hear my cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, you, when you lose a loved one or a friend and, and you cry out, God, God understands. He said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be what? Comforted. Well, God's word can't come back void, so he will comfort you. That's why when I started out the day when I came in here, what I told you, this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. Therefore, the world cannot, because I got a God that I can cry out to. And he don't just see me, but he also hear me. And here's what I like about it. He said, I heard your cry. And since I heard your cry, I'm coming to see about you because I'm concerned about you. That's assurance in God's word. I, 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 I see it, I hear it, and I'm concerned. What, what, else, what, what else you want him to do? I, I can't do no more than that. I can come to you. I can hear you. I can see you. But, but I'm letting you know I'm concerned. I'm concerned about every hair on your head. Yeah, yeah, help me here. That, that's what he said. I'm concerned about the suffering. I'm concerned about the problems that you have. I'm concerned about your sickness. I'm concerned. He said, that's what it says here in the text. So he said, that's an unexpected assurance that Moses did not have from God because this is the first time Moses has encountered God. Somebody tell you, Brother Maurice, you got baptized this morning. Only person know what I said to you in your ear in that baptismal pool was you and I and God. But I'm letting you know, young man, when you cry out, God will hear you. When you're going through stuff, God will see it. And when you confess your problems and, and you go to God, God will bless you. That's the assurance you have now that you have accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. And it's not going to always be easy. But I stopped by to tell you by and by. When you're going through something, won't he show up, Danny? Won't he come see about you? He will bless you when you least expect it. <coughs> That's because he said, I'm concerned about you. So Moses had an unexpected experience. He was minding his own business. And he had the sheep. And he went to the other side of the wilderness, the far side, and came to Mount Orad. And then he had an unexpected call from an unexpected source. That burning bush was the unexpected uh, source but the unexpected call came from God himself and then he had an unexpected holiness Moses take off your shoes for the ground that you're standing on is holy ground I stopped by to tell you he said but I gotta assure you some things Moses as you walk I'll be with you as you talk I'll talk through you uh, he said because I've heard the problems I've seen the problems and I am concerned about the problems well I have seen he said the way the Egyptians have oppressed you I stopped by to tell you if anybody can talk about somebody being oppressed we were oppressed before 1865 and uh, we've been being oppressed ever since 1865 to this very day. Not that we did anything to anybody except uh, we were fruitful and we multiplied. Stop by to tell you uh, when the children of Israel were down in Egypt land, they were down there and they were fruitful and they multiplied. Well, now God is getting ready to bring them uh, up out of Egypt land. Stop by to tell you, I've seen the way they have oppressed you. So now I'm sending you Pharaoh. I'm sending you Bailey. I'm sending you uh, Gillis. Uh, I'm sending you uh, to go see about 
my people. Every one of us in our own way has a little bit of Moses in us. So I stop by to tell you, uh, when somebody in your family gets sick, you go see about them. When a friend calls upon you, you go see about them. Have I had a witness hat? Uh, those people that were down in Egypt land was like Moses' children. Moses here is a type of Christ. He said, Moses, uh, I want you to go uh -huh, see about my children. When I check the text out, uh, there's a text that reveals to me uh, that God said to Jesus, uh, I want you to go down uh, and redeem man. Work with me here for just a little while. For he said, then uh, you have an unexpected assurance. But finally, uh, you have an unexpected call or commission. He said to Moses, uh, I want you to go down to Egypt land. But Moses said to God, uh, who am I that I uh -huh, should go to Pharaoh? Who am I that I should go down to Egypt? Well, uh, here's what God said to Moses. Uh, he said, I will be with you. I heard and I read in the text, Lo, I am with you even to the end of the world. So here we go. He said, One, I'll be with you. But two, he said, This will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, uh, he said, Moses, uh, what I want you to do, uh, I want you to come back to this mountain. And when you get here, I want you to come up the top of the mountain uh, and I want you to worship me. What a commission. Uh, what a call. That's all God is asking you to do. I want you to believe in my son, Jesus. Uh, and then I want you to come back and worship me. I stopped by to tell you it's all right to be nosy because being nosy is good for you sometime. Have I got a witness? I think I proved my thesis. It's good to be nosy. I stopped by to tell you I got a text the other day as I close. A young lady by the name of Sister Phyllis Hoskins, she said that she was in a store and she heard this noise of the things falling down somewhere. So she said, I got nosy. I went to see about it. And when I got there, this lady was down on her knees trying to pick the stuff back up and put it back on the shelf. She said, I looked at her and she was crying. And she said, I got down on my knees and I start helping the lady put the things back together. If she had not been nosy, she never would have got there. I stopped by to tell you, she said, then the manager came, listen to me and listen well. The lady said, I need to pay for this stuff. And he said, no, ma'am, you don't need to pay for it. We got insurance. I stopped by to tell you, if she had not been nosy and helping them get things back together, there's a man by the name of Jesus. He gives us uh, the insurance that we need. He assure us. He bless us. He take care of us. Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Won't he make a way for you? He will make a way for you. You know why he'll make it for you? Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Heir purchased with his blood. He will. I say he will. He will. I say he will. I'm glad. One Thursday. I 
I got nosy about this man by the name of Jesus. Maybe your date was on a Monday. It might have been Tuesday. It might have been Wednesday. But my date was on a Thursday. I got nosy about this man. He came to me at an unexpected time. He came to me with an unexpected source. I had heard about the Holy Ghost. But until I got it up in my body, until I got it down in my soul, I didn't really know what it really meant. But he changed me. He picked me up. He turned me around. Am I by myself? Don't he do it? Won't he bless you? Won't he pick you up? Won't he turn you around? This spirit, that's why I can say this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. I walk different. I talk different. I sing different. I run different. Because I met this man by the name of Jesus. He will. I never thought I'd be a preacher. I was too hard. Sinning left and sinning right. But he came in and turned me around. Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Oh! God's all right. Oh, I know he's all right. So it's good to be nosy sometimes. It's just what you're being nosy about that makes the difference. I will trust who in the Lord. I will trust. The doors of the church are, the doors of the church is open. You may come as a candidate for baptism. You may come by letter. You may come by Christmas. Come and be nosy. Just, just, just come and be nosy and find out about this Jesus. I will. I will. I will trust in the Lord until I all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Our Father and our God now, in the Son Jesus Christ of Nazareth name, there may be somebody here. Who do not know Jesus in the part of their sin. And I encourage them just to come and be nosy about you. And let them see what you can do for them. Maybe somebody here who's just uh, searching for a church home. Let, let them come and be nosy. And see how much God is up in here. And we believe in Jesus. And there may be somebody here who have not been able to find their way but need to find their way to you today. So I encourage them to listen to your voice. To say, I yield, I yield, and come and give their life to you. Whether it be by Christian experience, whether it be by letter, or whether it be for Canada baptism. The doors of the church open. Will you come? Amen, amen, amen. I will trust. Huh? Will there be one in? I will trust. You may be seated in the presence of God, Brother Maurice. I will.
high. Until I. We're gonna, I'm going to give uh, Brother Maurice his uh, baptism certificate. Then we're going to have the offering. Then we'll have the closing prayer and benediction. Amen. Ma Brown, it's all right to be nosy sometimes. It's all right to be nosy sometimes. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me. Where, where Maurice at? All right. Then we'll have the offering and do it after. I won't. Our Father and our God, now we thank you for this uh, opportunity to come back and give to you our tithes and our offerings. And we thank you for the experience of having unexpected experiences in our life that we could find you in the midst of our trials, troubles, and tribulations. So thank you, dear God. We ask that you would bless the offering that it may be used for the benefit of the, your kingdom and that you may be glorified in all that we're trying to do. This we ask that you would bless those who desire to give God, but at this point in time in their life, they just cannot. But I pray you shall bless them where they shall have manifold blessings from you, God, that they too shall come someday and give their tithes and offerings as you would have it to be. Bless those who have. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Come on, young blood. Don't think I'm just being brave because I got my shots and I've been immune, but I'm a little bit more comfortable than I was before. Uh, Brother Maurice, this is your certificate of baptism. And upon confession of your faith, you have been baptized in the year of our Lord, 2021. And I want to let you know that uh, we will, uh, you are 16 years old, 18. So you have all the rights and privileges. You, you grown man. You, you old enough to go get shot at in the military. So, yeah, you fully grown. Well, not quite, but you getting there. Uh, don't let that go to your head. Yeah, he's smiling up under that mask. <laughs> but you have all rights and privileges as every member in this church. My right hand is the right hand of fellowship for you. You have a right to sit in on all meetings. You have a right to vote. You have a right to make decisions around the church with the rest of us. So God bless you and thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. Is that blue pen up there? Right here. Should be a little pen right there. Thank you. He was supposed to have gotten baptized uh, last Sunday, and he, yeah, there you go. Just had to change the date. Today is the 14th. All right, God bless you. Thank you. Let's give the Lord a hand and him a hand. <clears throat> All right, ushers and deacons, we're ready to receive our offering, tithes and offerings. Eighteenth. Twelve to two. All right. Now, as they're coming for you and your family members, your friends and acquaintances, this Thursday from 12 noon to 2 p.m., we will be giving away free groceries. Uh, personally, I don't care who get them, but we need to help people wherever we can. Uh, hopefully all of you will get your stimulus check from the feds and help you take care of your business. Uh, but it's more to it than just that check, I promise you. So a lot of people will be blessed as a result of this. And we just started, and it's going to get a little better. Satan is mad. Is my mask right up there? Yeah. Look up under that, that tower there. 
Whoa. Okay, we good. We good. You good? You have an announcement before I go? Okay. Hold on, brother. Huh? Right there, 11. Match that button. Now we have a presentation for our pastor as he comes shh, before shh. us. Don't tell him everything. Don't tell him everything? No, don't tell him everything. Okay, uh, we, just, uh, we just want to celebrate our pastor. Good afternoon, the pastor. Here you go, young lady. No, they can't hear you. You got that mask on. I can't hardly hear you. Okay. Well, I had my shots. So. Yeah, just shot. <laughs> okay. See how we brag we get our shot? Yes. Yeah. Well, I had to do it on my home health care aid. So. But, um, again, good afternoon, Pastor, First Lady, Pulpit, and to our congregation. Here we are again, another year here to celebrate our pastor's birthday. It's such an honor that I could please have all of pastoral care to please stand that is here today. Some of us are out, but. Just hold your hand up, Mother Brown. There yeah. You go. I don't know why he not on pastoral care. He played too much, Pastor. Okay. So. Mother Brown, I know what you said, but we don't care. You grounded. You grounded in pastoral care. You ain't going nowhere. Pastor, we just want to show you that we love you. We appreciate you, and it's a token of our love. I certainly appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm, 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 a, I'm a whole minus 30 years 37 so now if you add that 30 back up i'll be hitting the big six seven i don't I, you know i gotta tell y'all now you know I, I don't feel it i don't feel it i still feel good i hear y'all over there especially when it comes to Deacon Bailey up there in his 80s and uh, almost hitting the big nine and i want to ask you on the 27th of March, I want to ask as many of you as possible to assemble here at the church with your cars. We want to caravan from here, and we want to go by Sister Wolf's house and say happy 100th birthday as a church. Then we want to leave her house and go to Sister Hopper's house, who will be 100 years old this month also, and wish her a happy birthday. It's on the 25th, so it'll be 27th. But that's on a Saturday, 27th. Then we're going to caravan back here, and you're going to pick up your fish. Uh, we're going to give everybody in the church, even those who don't caravan with us, you know, like Jesus in the Bible, you know, he gave everybody the same. And when you come back through, we're going to have hot fish for you. Uh, I don't know about the fries, but we're going to give you a, a nice fish sandwich, and then that way... I'll get to see everybody's faces and some members who I hadn't seen for a while. Little Robinson, you and uh, Malik and Brother Gardner and Brother Rice, uh, along with Sister, uh, the pastor of care and stuff like that. We want to have you here and set up about two or three fries so we can fry all of that fish. And they can come right by uh, the, the side here and pick up their hot fish sandwiches. Y'all want bone in or bone out? Everybody bone out, raise your hand. Bone in. See, y'all y'all straight up Florida. <laughs> All right, so, so that'd be straight. Whitey's are so small right now, but we can see. But if we can get the bone in, we'll do it. If not, we'll get, uh, the, we'll get croakers or something. But we'll do bone in, and then we'll fry it for you. And then you'll be able to pick it up. Because I just want to see everybody's face at this point. There's so many people's faces I have not seen. And look here. We didn't ask you for a dime. 
We, want, we ain't asking you for no money. We just want you to drive by, pick up your fish sandwich. And those who shouldn't eat fried food, you're going to do it anyway. I know it. So just come on by. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and it's going to be a nice size fish so you can put your hot sauce on it and your mustard. And enjoy. Now somebody want to know if I'm going to have something to drink. Yeah, we're going to have a case of water on ice <laughs> and give you some water and some light bread so you won't choke yourself on the bone. Yes. <laughs> Let's pray. Yes, ma'am. What time are we going to meet for the caravan? We're going to meet here at... Uh, Let's say uh, 11 o'clock for the caravan. Yeah, I know, but 11 o'clock for the caravan. We'll leave here at 11 o'clock, so be here by 1030. We'll leave at 11 to do the caravan so we can get back here by about 1230 at the latest. Then we can get to fishing and we can go from there. Uh, keep, keep Nick's as far away from the fish as you can get it. He's allergic to fish. Yeah. He's the only brother I ever met. That's, I, I understand it, but he's the only brother I ever met that's allergic to fish. So it must be the mercury in it. But you got to remember, he's from Syracuse, too. He, not, he, not, he, wasn't, he, he came down here, but he wasn't born here like that. You know what I mean? So, so we, we have to look after for him. His wife and the baby is back there. We can't let nothing happen to him. That baby got to grow up, go to college, get her master's, get her doctorate. So... He got uh, one, one, two, three, four, four girls, and that's 250000 each. So he already had a million dollars. I don't know what to tell him, but that, that's just the way it rolled. And his, his daughter hold her hand up. She say three million, Pastor, three. <laughs> All right. May we stand for our prayer and benediction. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, good. Appreciate it. Uh, Tuesday at uh, 10 a.m. is the home going service for Sister Linda Malpress. Look out for each other. The Bible say pray for one another. And even though we have unexpected experiences in our life, we can be assured in Christ Jesus that everything is going to be all right. It's getting hot again. So y'all going to want to go down to the beach or you want to go somewhere. But be mindful of the fact you got to keep these masks on. Because they're having back wheat down in Daytona. And I guarantee you, as the man would say on the cooking show from Louisiana, let's sprinkle a little bit more hot sauce on it. I guarantee you, COVID-19 going to go up. Because of that stupidity. Pray for this governor. That you would. God would put his heart in his hand. And he would listen to God. To stop making these decisions. That's putting more people's lives in jeopardy. So. Uh, the president has did what we asked him to do. The Florida task force for COVID-19. And it's all over the state. We have been in contact with the White House now for at least the last three weeks. And they're using what we're doing here in Florida in that site out there at Gateway as an example for what we're trying to do around the rest of the country. And so we ask him, look, we gotta, you got to give it to the 18 years old and up. So I thank God for him that he says, as of May, federal guidelines, which means that don't matter what the governor say, Everybody. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It, 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 it one of us. It, everybody. 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 Uh, that's the way we say it down here, not Syracuse. Everybody. <laughs> we'll be able to get that vaccine. But what we need you to do is please don't listen to the foolishness out there. Uh, Wendy Williams get on TV talking about if you don't want to take it, just don't say nothing. Don't encourage somebody, discourage somebody else because you don't want it. You're just trying to get somebody on your side because of the way you feel. So just, 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 you know, if you can't say something good, don't say anything at all. You know, but, 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 but encourage your family members to get this vaccine so you can hold your grandchildren and your children and 
spend time with your family like you want to. Now, he say, if you had the shot, you can spend time at home with your family. But they're going to run it out there and running wild, getting yourself all in trouble again. If you go to the vaccine site today, if you need it, they're not going to turn you away. When Hammond come back in a couple of weeks, they're not going to turn you away. All right? God bless you. Let's bow our heads. Now, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for allowing us to be nosy and finding out who you were. Because many of us had a question. We had heard of God, but we didn't really know who he was until he intervened in our lives and started doing things for us and our family and in this world in which we live in. So we're eternally grateful for that, God, by you sending your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, down to save sinners like all of us. And so now, God, I ask you to stop by those hospital beds. I ask you to touch them with your finger of love, your hand of mercy. I ask you to stop by those homeless shelters and stop by those foster homes where children are and protect those children. I'm asking you, God, to stop by those homes where people are grieving. We are grieving because every time we lose one of our members, it touches us in our heart and in our own way. So now, Father, in the name of thy son, Jesus, we realize we can't do anything without you. So cover us, keep us, protect us from all hurt, harm, and dangers that we go through. Keep our families together. Hold us that we may love one another, be kind to one another, pray for one another. And so, Father, in the name of thy son, Jesus, I even pray for the leaders of this world that they would do right by your people and stop being so selfish and being so greedy about this money because money is the root, the love of money is the root of all evil. And so now, Father, I thank you for the pastors and the ministers, the leaders of this church, the members of this church. I pray a very special prayer for them every morning that they be able to make it from one day to the next, that they don't have any issues in their lives. God, I thank you for delivering Minister Parker from that cancer. We praise you, God, for that. I thank you, God, for delivering Pastor McGee from that cancer. God, I thank you for delivering Sister Smith and Deacon Smith from their ailments in life that they've had. Lord, I thank you how when Brother Johnson had to go back to the hospital and dealing with his kidney, but you delivered him to. Lord, I thank you. For you still in the delivering business, I ask you to stop by the Wilcox home, both families, and let them know and be assured that you're still with them. I ask you to stop by Sister Schofield, who's out there in that nursing home, but not by herself. Stop by Brother Palmer, who's in the nursing home, and let them know, God, that you're still with them. You still walk with them. I saw Sister Hopper laying down. She looked a little weak, God, but you're still holding her in the hollow of your hand. Talk to Sister Wolf. 100 years old. God, I pray that someday I can make it to be 100, at least 100 also. Lord, I pray for everybody that's on that sick list, everybody that's homebound, and there's many of them. As a matter of fact, God, there's so many of them, you can't, we can't hardly keep up with them. But I pray that these leaders will call on them and check on them and cover them and keep them in a very special way. Lord, I pray. For any guests that might have walked through that door, that when they walk back out, that they never be the same anymore the rest of their life. Lord, I pray for every church standing in your name all over this world. Lord, I pray that you will cover these people who are in this hospital with this COVID-19. I pray you shall lift this plague. Because the truth of the matter is, God, just like you had the plagues for Egypt, plagues have not stopped. So, God, you got our unexpected attention and now we see what it has done and you have provided a deliverance for us and so now Lord we thank you so I pray that people shall listen to the scientists I pray that they shall use some common sense I pray God that they will go get their shot that's all I can do it's in your hand now bless us now may the grace of our father May the sweet communion, God, of the Holy Spirit, Lord, may it rest. Lord, may it rule. Lord, may it abide with these, thy people, not just now, 
but now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all sing together. Let the church say amen. Bless us, Father. Bless us individually and collectively. God has spoken. Have a wonderful afternoon.